So how many of you have seen some really awesome aquascapes on YouTube and you wanna recreate them? And the one thing you notice about a lot of these tanks is they lack a lid. In this video, we're gonna talk about whether or not you need a lid, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and we are going to tackle this question because I've seen it come up a few times lately and I wanna make sure we understand the advantages and disadvantages of having a lid on your aquarium. So there are a couple good reasons why you might not wanna have a lid on an aquarium. And often, as I've already mentioned, it's because of your aquascape. Let's face it, it's really cool to see some of these tanks with a great aquascape and they've got some wood or some rocks that are extending above the surface of the tank. And that just really makes the tank feel like it's part of the room and not a standalone object. It looks awesome. The second reason why you may not wanna have a lid is light reflection. And so one of the cool things about not having a lid is when you put the light on the tank, there's nothing, there's no glass, there's no polycarbonate, there's nothing to bounce the light back off into your eye. And that can make the tank look nicer, make it look a little bit more natural, and reduce the eye strain when you're looking at the tank. One of the problems we have in our fish room, because we cover so many of our tanks, is even filming them or looking at them, sometimes we get some light reflection back into our eye, back into the camera, and it becomes a little bit more difficult to enjoy the tank. And the third reason you might not want a lid on a tank is it can be expensive. It's just another added expense. In fact, we've done videos on comparing glass lids versus polycarbonate. I'll put those in the description below as well as in the upper right hand corner. And we've talked about how to make DIY polycarbonate lids. And a lot of our tanks have those lids to save a little bit of cost. Now in our fish room, we only have a couple of tanks that don't have lids. One of them is this 50 gallon low boy and it's for a reason I already mentioned. We've got some of the woodwork that's sticking up above the surface of the water and we can't put a lid on that tank and it looks pretty nice. Now a couple other reasons why sometimes you may not want a lid and that is one, yes, it is true that glass and polycarbonate, anytime you have a structure between the light and your plants, it's going to cut down a little bit on the amount of light that gets to plants. We have not found that to be significant in any way, shape, or form. They both do a good job of allowing light to pass through to grow all the plants we have in our fish room, but there is a potential for a little bit of light to be reduced as it goes into the tank. That's especially true if you're not properly maintaining your lids, which is another reason why some people don't like fish tank lids. Inevitably, the bottom side of the lid that's facing the tank is going to be covered with algae. You've got some splashing from your sponge filters, your hang on the back filters, a lot of light there, a lot of moisture, even with humidity uh, hitting the bottom side of that lid, and you're probably going to see some algae growth. So it's one more thing you are going to have to maintain and clean, maybe not weekly, but certainly once a month. You'll notice a big difference in the way your tank looks. If you start cleaning all the algae off your lids, it's going to look a lot nicer, but it is another thing you have to maintain. So right now we have about 68 fish tanks up and running in our fish room. And as I mentioned, we have exactly two that are not covered. So why do we cover our fish tanks? The most important reason for us, and it's something I've discussed in a previous video, and that is we need to manage humidity in our fish room. I'm gonna put that video in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. A lot of good information there. And even if you've only got a few tanks but they're in the same room, you might wanna cut down on the amount of water that goes into the room and covering your tanks is the best way to do that. If we did not cover our tanks back here, we would not be able to adequately control the humidity. And so that's thing number one, when we control the humidity, we control the room's atmosphere, which means we cut down on the likelihood of mold. The other thing that can happen in addition to humidity, if we're not covering the tanks, is often some of the filtration that we use can cause splashing at the surface of the tank. So things like air stones, sponge filters, hang on back filters. When the water is being returned or when the water bubbles to the surface, sometimes little water droplets will leave the tank. You'll notice that by looking at the rim of your tank, sometimes there's some hard water stains. Maybe there's a little bit of hard water stains on the side of your tank, right next to the wall where the tank is. And so we wanna cut down on that as well because that in turn will also cut down on mold. Another reason why we cover all of our tanks, you wouldn't believe how many fish will actually jump. We've had all kinds of fish jump and we wanna cover the tanks to prevent that. We've had almost 12 inch Oscars jump out of our tank and those were actually covered on the tank behind me, the low boy, that has almost a full lid, but there's a little part next to the end where it's not covered. Even with that, once in a while, I will find Maltese on the ground. We have found all kinds of different fish. By the way, if you're keeping bettas, 
they can jump too and you wouldn't normally think that with those nice long flowing fins but yes they will sometimes exit the top of a tank snails will crawl out shrimp can crawl out sometimes so it's important have a nice fitting lid for your tank to keep the inhabitants in the tank so you're not finding them on the floor next to it later on finally and this is a big one water parameters it's not something we normally think about but if you were to compare two tanks for instance if you compare the tank behind me the 50 gallon low boy the multi-tank that is covered to the 50 gallon low boy on the other side of the fish room that is not covered we lose a lot more water due to evaporation in the 50 gallon low boy that is not covered how much as much as an inch per week now let's think about that for a second. This is roughly a 10 inch tank. If we're losing an inch per week of water, that means we're losing about 10% of our water per week just due to evaporation. You think it's so what? Just put the water back in. Yes, you can do that and that's what most people do, but there's a problem that sometimes we don't fully think through. And that is when we lose water to evaporation, we are only losing pure water, which means all the minerals, waste products, if we're adding salt, that all stays in the tank. Over time, what can happen is as we do our tank maintenance, let's just say on that tank, we've established a 25% water change per week is what we need. Well, you've already lost 10%, and so what you're actually doing is a water change of 15%, but you're filling in 25% every week. What does that mean long-term? Long-term, what that means is the mineral concentrations, the metal concentrations, the salt concentrations are all increasing over time. And so if you were to measure total dissolved solids in that tank week after week, month after month, you would see that those concentrations are in fact increasing if you are not compensating for that 10% that you're dealing with in a water evaporation. Now this is probably not going to lead to issues in the short term, but in the long term, if the TDS, total dissolved solids, continues to rise, if you're adding salt to your tank every week based on the amount of water you're, you think you're changing, which is in this case 25%, your salt concentrations are going up, your mineral concentrations, water hardness might be increasing, and that in turn over time can stress out your fish to the point where maybe in a year or a year and a half, that uncovered tank, when you start adding new fish, they don't do well, they don't eat, some of them die. It's just something to keep in mind. If you don't cover your tanks, you're going to have changing water parameters over a long period of time. All right, everyone, I hope you found that useful. And if you did, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.